We're going to start with a small straight shank dry fly hook, and this Daiichi 1110 works really well. Place whatever hook you're using into your vise securely. Then start a very fine thread about a quarter of the way down from the eye of the hook. I am using Viva 16 aught for this. Once you've removed the waist, then proceed to make even wraps down your hook shank, creating a thin black body. Try to make this as smooth as possible. And then bring your thread back to just shy of the start of the thread. Now select a single CDC puff. I like using white, but many have luck with gray or dun color. On these small flies, you really don't need a whole puff. I like splitting them in half. Using wet fingers to split them really helps. Once split, grab just one side of the puff and tie it on top of your hook with a pinch wrap. Then you can pull it back a little, so the wing is about as long as the body. And this will allow you to tie three to four of these flies with one side of a single CDC puff. Then clip off the waist close and clean up that section with smooth wraps. But bring your thread back up to the starting point of your wing. You will need a rooster cape like this one, and I am using a whiting silver cape. However, they're pretty expensive, and you could probably get away with a cape like this, which is Met's number three grade. Just make sure that the feathers on top of the cape are long enough to work with, because we're gonna need very fine ones. As you can see, we're getting about a 22 to 20 size with this feather, which should be fine with this fly. Of course, with a higher end cape like this whiting, you're gonna get longer feathers when selecting this hook size range. Whatever feather you use, strip off the bottom barbs, just giving yourself a small section of bare stem, and then clip off the excess if need be. Then with the shiny side of the feather facing you, strip off just a couple barbs on the right side of the feather. This will help to ensure that the feather starts wrapping evenly and cleanly. Tie that in perpendicular to the hook on top of the shank with two wraps. Then make a wrap on the opposite direction of the feather stem, creating an X on top. Then make two very tight wraps in front of the feather, and then advance your thread to just shy of the hook eye. This ensures that the feather stays perfectly perpendicular to the hook shank, like so. Clip off any excess feather, then grab the tip of your feather with some hackle pliers and proceed to make very tight wraps up to where your thread is. Then capture the feather with two wraps. Holding the feather about 60 degrees while wiggling the thread through the barbs will help you keep from trapping the feather fibers. It's hard to do this really clean though, so just be patient and practice. Then let go of the feather with your pliers and pull all the fibers rearward. First off, I'm sorry about my fat fingers in the way of this tiny fly. I probably should have changed camera angles here. But you can see it took a few strokes to course the fibers back. Just keep stroking them and they will angle rearward. Then make a few wraps in front of them to help keep them aligned backwards and out of the way of the eye. When you're happy with the positions of the barbs, then clip off your excess hackle. Save that by the way if it's long enough. You may be able to get another fly or two out of it. Then clip off any errant fibers you may have missed. And then whip finish your fly. I like to paint a little head cement on the fly before whip finishing, as this will make cementing much easier on this tiny fly. When I clip off the thread, I leave a little tag end, as it will help keep the fly more durable. And it's really not going to be seen through this hackle either. Well there we have it, a simple yet effective small midge pattern. This is actually one of the more easy of the tiny midge dry flies, and it's also really effective. So check out this fish I caught on the San Juan with this fly. Now if you've ever fished this river, you know that the fish are very picky with size and look of the flies, yet one fooled this very nice trout. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share with your friends and hit that like button. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.